Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan, a podcast for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable creative product business with me, Catherine Erdley. The Resilient Retail Game Plan is a podcast dedicated to one thing, breaking down the concepts and tools that I've gathered from 20 years in the retail industry and showing you how you can use them in your business. This is the real nuts and bolts of running a successful product business, broken down in an easy, accessible way. This is not a podcast about learning how to make your business look good. It's the tools and techniques that will make you and your business feel good, confidently plan, launch and manage your products, and feel in control of your sales numbers and cash flow to help you build a resilient retail business. Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan. Hi, I'm your host, Catherine Erdley, as well as the founder of the Resilient Retail Club. The Resilient Retail Club is my membership group and consultancy for product businesses. You can find out more at resilientretailclub.com. And if you use the code 10 podcast, that's one zero podcast, you can get £10 off your first month. So today's topic is artificial intelligence. So I know that there's been so much chat about AI at the moment, but I wanted to just talk through all of the ways that creative product businesses could use AI to help them in their business. I did a quick poll on Instagram a couple of weeks ago, and I asked you if you used AI in your business. 40% of people said no. 45% of people said they dabbled and only 15% of people said yes, they loved AI tools and they used them a lot. In terms of what people were using them for then, about 50% of people who did use the AI tools were using them for product descriptions, 10% for social media captions, 13% of blogs and 27% were using it to come up with ideas. The reason I wanted to talk about this is, as I said, obviously about half of the people who I surveyed said that they were using it, but only a small proportion were saying that they'd really embraced it, whereas other people have been dabbling. And I think that personally, I know that there's a lot of chat and a lot of worries about AI. And I have friends, for example, who work in education and they are really scratching their heads about how to deal with this and how to deal with it in the classroom and to deal with it with students' work and everything else. But as a small business owner, I think that it's quite incredible, really, what the AI can do. And I wanted to talk through some of the ways that I've been using it, some of the ways that I've been seeing clients use it, because it's not often that something comes along that is very much cost effective. I mean, it's free to use a lot of the time and it's going to save time and potentially even improve parts of your business. So for me, this is an opportunity that for small business owners could be really quite transformational. And I wanted to talk you through some of the ways that you can use it. Now, just to say as well that there's different ways that you can access AI. Actually, I I just want to draw the distinction a little bit between AI and what we're talking about here. Because artificial intelligence, the funny thing is, is I did a talk back in 2018, I'm fairly sure it was, which was all about artificial intelligence. And at that point, it was talking more about algorithms and things like recommendations. And the point that was being made, that was being made at that point, which was five years ago, is that artificial intelligence has been around for ages. Artificial intelligence and machine learning have been around and in use for a really, really long time. So, for example, Google Maps works off artificial intelligence and machine learning. Things like our Netflix recommendations, the Amazon welcome screen with all of the product selections, all of that comes from artificial intelligence. What we're actually talking about really here is this new range of the what they call the GPT. So GPT stands for Chat Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And basically, I think what is so remarkable about this compared to other uses of AI is the fact that it is processing a human natural language and generating a response. And so I think it's these generative chat uses of AI is what really has kind of spooked a lot of people and caused a lot of people, a lot of discussion, really, you know, important discussion about how it's used going forward. But that's when we say AI, oh, everyone's sort of bandies around AI as a general term for what's happening right now. But I think they're two different things. As I said, this is a new development. Even a year ago, these tools weren't as widely available. 
In case you're wondering if you listen to this podcast and you think, all right, okay, I'd like to have a go and see what is happening and, and play around with it. You can go to, obviously the one that everyone's heard about is GPT-4, ChatGPT. If you wanted to go to ChatGPT, for example, you go to chat.openai.com. The other thing that I do, to be honest, when I'm using it myself, is I go into Bing. I have a Windows computer and Bing is the Microsoft search engine that I never used at all before I started playing around with its chat tool. And Microsoft were partners with OpenAI and ChatGPT. So it's not surprising they've integrated this technology into their search engine. So if you go into Bing and you go to the chat function of Bing, then you can pretty much get all of the same features. There's a couple of other things as well I wanted to mention is that Maneshka Stewart who many of you may know from Marketing with Maneshka. She's an SEO expert and small business marketing expert. She has developed a range of dashboards using AI prompts that hooks into ChatGPT, but you can put in a description and it comes up with not just prompts, but an entire, basically entire marketing strategy, all generated by ChatGPT. So it's quite mind boggling. I've purchased it myself. I'm going to put the link below in the show notes. It is, I will be completely upfront, it is an affiliate link. So if you purchase it, I will basically, I get some kind of kickback. I'm not even sure what it is, but I'm only suggesting it because I think what Maneshka has done is really quite remarkable. And if it's something that you're interested in and interested in using and time-saving for yourself, then I highly recommend giving it a look. So let's run through then some of the use cases for chat GPT or GPT AI bots in general and talk a little bit about how they work and how you might use them to save time in your business. So the first one that I'm going to mention is one that actually somebody told me that they were using it for and I just hadn't thought about it, but it's absolutely brilliant. So the first use case would be customer service and support. So there are, of course, chatbots. They've been chatbots for a very long time. Again, I did a talk pre-COVID. I think it was back in 2019. And at that point, they were talking about how even then the chatbots were able to triage probably 80 to 85% of common queries. So you were really only dealing with the escalated one. But so there are, of course, AI chatbots you can get for your business to help deal with common queries. However, (laughs) <laughs> what I really liked is somebody said that they will try and put, they'll put in an email <laughs> into chat GPT and they'll say, write me a response to this, write me a polite response to this. So <laughs> it can actually write a customer service email. And if you are at a point, so someone said to me, you know, sometimes I just get really burnt out. And I can't be bothered to think of how to respond to somebody politely. I just put it into ChatGPT and I ask it to write me a polite response to this email. So next time you're stuck uh, or you get one of those emails and you just don't want to engage with it, give it a try. I thought that was a brilliant use case to actually get it to write a whole whole email for you. And that's the thing. It can really write really quite extensive pieces of content as well. So... Next use case, generating product ideas and descriptions. So you may have seen, if you're a Shopify user, you may have seen Shopify have actually started to roll out. They've got their magic descriptions. This is the thing. A lot of the platforms are kind of playing, well, not playing catch up exactly, but they're realizing that they've got to offer some of these tools built in to make it, you know, a better experience. Maneshka's dashboards has definitely got a whole thing about product descriptions as well that you can set up to to write the descriptions, but it's actually really quite impressive. So for example, let's have a go here. I'm going to go into Bing right now. So I typed in, write a product description for a floral summer sleeveless dress. And this is what it came back with. Looking for a fresh and feminine dress to brighten up your summer wardrobe? Look no further than this floral summer sleeveless dress. This dress features a flattering neckline, a fitted waist and a flared skirt that falls just above the knee. The dress is made of soft and breathable cotton fabric with a lovely floral print in shades of pink, blue and green. Whether you're heading to a picnic, a garden centre or a casual date, this dress will make you feel like a summer breeze. Pair it with sandals, a straw hat and some jewellery for a chic and effortless look. So, of course, you know... 
Who knows if this is correct or not? But it's pretty amazing that it came up with all of that by itself just from me saying that I wanted a product description for a floral summer sleeveless dress. Incidentally, I know if this sounds like a big advert for Mineshka's dashboards, but what was interesting, she's actually built something in that you can specify your tone of voice. So if your tone of voice is bright and breezy, this might work for you. But if it's different, if it's more playful or, you know, it's, it's just not, this doesn't sound like you, then there are some models you can actually train to, to sound more like you. And you can even put in some examples of your own writing to get it to tell you what your voice is, which I thought was pretty amazing. So then what's really amazing about these chats as well is that you can then actually go back and tweak it. So it gave me that and I wrote back and said, make it sound more appealing. And then they said, here is a revised product description. You'll be the picture of summer elegance in this floral summer sleeveless dress. This stunning dress showcases a V neckline that accentuates your curves, a fitted waist that cinches your silhouette. The dress is crafted from high quality cotton fabric. Anyway, you get the point. It kind of ramped it up a notch. And then I said, it's a look that's sure to turn heads apparently. And then I said, add some points about sustainability. Anyway, so you said the same thing again, but it said this dress is crafted from high quality organic cotton fabric that feels soft and light on your skin and features a gorgeous floral print in vibrant hues of pink, blue and green. Why choose organic cotton? Organic cotton is a sustainable choice that benefits both people and planet. By choosing organic cotton, you're supporting farmers whose natural methods to grow cotton without harmful synthetic pesticides and fertilizers. And it went on and on like this and talked about organic cotton. I think for me, what's so amazing about it is that you don't just have to put one prompt in and then it says, okay, that's great. It can actually, you know, you can refine it as well. So if you put something in, you're like, no, that's not quite it. You can actually go back to it and um, and get it to give you more detail. So that's an example of product descriptions. As I said, you may well have seen or you may have already played around with it. That Shopify have this built, uh, they're building uh, AI descriptions in lots of things that I use. So for example, I use a software called Lead Pages to create signups for talks and workshops and things like that. They've built in an AI headline builder. So you can, again, tell it roughly what you want and it comes up with the headlines. So let's talk about some different ones then. So creating marketing content and campaigns, there's huge amounts of applications here. So ChatGPT can help write engaging blog posts, social media posts, newsletters, ads, and more tailored to a particular target audience. And I think this one's really amazing. And to be honest, I've used it to save me time. And, you know, if you create a reel in Instagram or you create a post and then you put it up and then you're like, oh, I need to write a caption, you can actually go into ChatGPT and you can ask it to create Instagram captions, for example. So I wrote, write an Instagram caption for a festival themed outfit. It was a kind of brief one. It just said, here are some possible captions. Feeling festive in this boho chic look ready to rock this festival season with my squad. (laughs) Some of these are pretty lame. Anyway, I then pasted in feeling festival in this boho chic look. Can you make this longer? And this is sure I can try to make it longer. How about this? Feeling festive in this boho chic look. I'm loving the flowy dress, the cute accessories and the flower crown. This outfit is perfect for dancing, singing and having fun at the festival. And it had some little emojis. And you can do all kinds of things. You could say, make it even longer. You could say, add hashtags. You could say things like add emojis. So you basically can just tell it what you want and it will come up with it. And personally, I found that if I just need to put a caption onto something and I just need it to say something useful, (laughs) it's a great time saver. So I definitely suggest giving it a go for things like Instagram captions. Again, you can just type it in. This is what I mean is so powerful about it is that it is completely free. You know, you can just give it a go and and see what it comes back with. And then you can ask it again to refine it, change it, and then you can just paste it in. So even if all you do is use it to come up with ideas, so equally you could say, give me a list of 20 Instagram post ideas to help me sell my candles. And you certainly can do that. Give me 20, I'm going to just do it right now, Instagram post ideas to sell my candles. Let's see what it says. Thinking about it. 
sometimes it does just totally miss the point and give you a really weird answer. But then, you know, it's the same thing. I've got an Alexa at home and sometimes I ask it the weather and it tells me about the Cincinnati Bengal football team once memorably, which you still can't work out. Okay, so here are 20 Instagram post ideas to sell your candles. A video of you making a candle from scratch, showing the process and the ingredients. A photo of a cosy corner in your home with a candle burning and a book or a cup of tea. A boomerang of you blowing out a candle and making a wish. A carousel of different candle scents and colours with a caption explaining their benefits and mood. A testimonial from a happy customer with a photo of their candle and a quote. And on and on and on. It's got a lot. A story highlight of your best-selling candles. Swipe up links to your website or shop. User-generated content posts where you repost photos or a video from one of your followers. It can do all of these things. And then I'd asked it, write a script for an Instagram live. And so, for example, write an Instagram live script to promote my new jewellery collection. Here is a possible script for your Instagram live. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited to show you my new jewellery collection I've been working on for months. This collection is very special to me because it's inspired by my personal journey of love and self-empowerment. I've always loved jewellery, but I used to feel insecure about wearing it. I thought it was too flashy, too expensive or too much for me. I felt like I didn't deserve to wear beautiful things. But then I realised that jewellery is not just an accessory. It's a way of expressing yourself and celebrating your uniqueness. That's why I created this collection, to help you feel confident and beautiful in your own skin. Each piece is handmade with high quality materials and designed with love and care and so on and so forth. It goes on for quite a long time and then it comes up with different offers and this kind of thing. So it's, uh, it, again, if you listen to this and you think, do you know what, this sounds horrifying. I don't want to sound like a robot. I totally get that. And I do think that actually, I think going forward it, in a way, there'll be a big rush of people using this and then there'll also be a movement back towards people not using it. And uh, for example, things like for my Forbes contributor, agreement, I had to sign a new agreement that said that I wouldn't use AI generated text in my articles, which I thought was quite interesting. So I'm sure, you know, for lots of people who are wanting to create high quality, unique content, they have to make sure that people aren't using this. And also I think if you are, if you do want to be super stand out, then it is important that you still have your own voice. But to be honest, it's also a really great time saver. Even if you asked it to write or give you an outline. You could say, write me an outline for a a live. And it might just give you a structure that you can then use yourself and talk about things. But I think for me, what is so powerful is is the fact that this is the ideas generator. It's the the end of a long, busy day. And I don't have time to come up with ideas. I don't have time to come up with the script. I don't know what I'm even going to say. And if you ever felt like that, then this is your opportunity to think, well, if I've never, I don't know what to say to sell my latest collection. You can put all the information in and you can ask it to come up with ideas for you, which for me is what makes it really so, so powerful. And of course it can do more. It can write blog posts. You can even ask it to come up with keyword suggestions or to write SEO optimized blog posts. You're going to need to write it in your own tone of voice. Amy from Studio Cotton had made some really great points about how not to sound like a robot when you write your blog and to how to let your voice come through. And I think that's really important. But definitely from an ideas generation point of view, I think it's really, really important. But it can do so much more than that. And given that social media can be so time consuming and content creation can be so time consuming and idea generation can be so time consuming, I think that it's a really great tool to start playing around with. And there's so much more on top of that. There's things like, you know, you could ask it to come up with tips and and fun facts if you're doing content around that for your particular product area. You can give it a piece of writing and then say, can you make this more compelling? So if you feel like, do you know what, my emails, they're just always a little bit too soft of an approach and I want them to be a little bit more direct about having a direct, clear call to action, you can paste the text in and ask it to make it more direct. You can also do things like paste in a load of customer feedback and say, summarize in one sentence what people love about these products. So you can kind of really distill down what it is that people like. You can basically use it to to have a look at any text and, and manipulate it as well as the whole idea generation. 
So as we said, people are using it a lot for product descriptions. That's probably the biggest one that people are using it for now. But there's so much more in terms of using it for social media captions. And I think give it a go. I think it's just something for me. I when I think about these tools, as I said, I do know, I do understand that it's very problematic, and that it is causing a lot of headaches for a lot of educators in particular. But I think what is interesting is for small business owners, I think about something like Canva. So I don't know if any of you use the tool Canva, but for me, it's been an absolute game changer for my business. I mean, I've used it pretty much since the get-go, so probably about five years, because I'm not a graphic designer and I would not have the ability to put out branded content, to be completely honest, if I wasn't able to use Canva. But at the same time, if I want something, you know, when I was doing my branding, when I was actually creating, wanted to create social media graphics, then I went to a graphic designer and I paid them to create them for me. So I think Canva kind of plugs some gaps, but it doesn't replace everything. And I think the same will be true for these GPT, these generative chatbots, Because ultimately, they're going to plug some gaps. And I think that's what I would really strongly suggest that you think about using in your business to where you know that you don't have time to do it and you know that you it's maybe holding you back. Use it in there. But then there's going to be lots of different places that it's not applicable. And when you want to show up as your authentic self and have real connections, human to human connections with your customers, then it's not going to be appropriate. So for me, it's about looking at where you've got time blocks in your business. Time sucks. Things like having to write Instagram captions, things like newsletters, even even if you just ask them for some newsletter ideas, even if you ask them for some structure ideas. Sometimes if I'm putting together a talk on something, you can say like, based on this title, what's the structure you'd suggest for this talk? And again, like I'm still writing the talk, I'm still researching it, I'm still creating all of the presentation, I'm still delivering the talk. But sometimes that first step of really having to think about what's the structure, it's nice just to someone, not someone, something to present you with an option that you can then work off. So That is my suggestion for you. (laughs) I hope you've enjoyed the little demonstration. If you're already using it, I'd love to know if you have any other use cases that we haven't even discussed today. But I think, you know, play around with it. Have a look and see how it can save you some time. And sometimes it won't be right. Sometimes it will be way off the mark. But it's, like I said, just exactly in the same way that voice activated devices that we have in our homes like Alexa, sometimes they get that spectacularly wrong. The other thing, as I said, if you want to get really deep into it and use it to do really, I mean, huge pieces of work for you in terms of things like even creating your sales funnels and your strategy and even ad copy as well, then definitely go check out what Maneshka is offering. As I said, the link's below. <laughs> Normally I say I'm not on commission, but in this case, actually, it is a it is a um, affiliate link. But as I said, I'm only because I myself have purchased it. And again, it just helps fill in knowledge gaps and time gaps, which is which that's pretty amazing, isn't it? There's a few downsides, of course. I mean, we've talked about it. Sometimes it gets it wrong. Sometimes it doesn't sound like your tone of voice. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, do I want to sound like it could be written by AI? But to be honest, some of the some of them are just so good and so natural sounding. I think you'd be hard pushed to tell what was written by AI versus what wasn't. Obviously, you've got to check everything. It can be incorrect. It can give nonsensical answers. You need to check and correct them. And just making sure basically sense checking like you would with anything. It it can create the framework or the templates, but you yourself are going to have to make sure that it's absolutely right for the business. So the key things really are go have fun, play around with it, see what it can do for you. If you've used it for your product descriptions, give it a go for your social media. If you're already using it, try try putting in a, a customer email and see what it says as in terms of a response and if you've used it for general ideas you can always take what's amazing about it as well so let's say you you come up with you say come up with 20 instagram post ideas it will generate them and then you can pick one of them and say write the caption for this and then it will or you can get it to suggest variations lots of different things and that's the real power of it it's not just going to suggest something but you're going to actually be able to 
effectively correct it or guide it or say, actually, well, can you make it more like this or less like this? And uh, just have a go and see see what it does. Don't forget to come on over to Instagram at Resilient Retail Club and let me know what you thought of today's episode. Are you going to give it a go? Have a tinker around with it? If you have a minute to rate and review the podcast, then that always makes such a big difference. If you're in iTunes, you can rate it and leave a review. I love, love, love to get reviews. So, (laughs) And if you are in Spotify, then you can rate it inside the app as well. And of course, if you subscribe or you follow, you'll be the first to know about each new episode. Until next time. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, then I invite you to check out resilientretailclub.com. The Resilient Retail Club is the membership for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable product business. No more trawling Google trying to find the answers to your questions or wading through general business advice that speaks mainly to service-based businesses. Whether you're still at the idea stage or you've been going for a while but want to get more focused and organised when it comes to your business, the Resilient Retail Club is the place for you. With a library of courses tailored to creative product businesses, several live sessions a month, and a supportive and active community, the Resilient Retail Club is the perfect membership to help you hit your goals faster. Check it out at resilientretailclub.com.